here in the southeastern part of Asia, and the population is approximately 18 million. According to Priyanka Bohani, um, who is a journalist for the PBS, stated February 11, 2016, that since 2011, 470,000 Syrians were either wounded or killed. That's one in 10 Syrians. Um, because of this, 4.8 million Syrians have fled have fled Syria. Um, during my recent studies, I have um, I have discovered that not many college students are aware of serious situations, and because of this, I am here to inform you that of the deeper and darker reality of Syria and how we can help them. In this speech, I will discuss three main topics. I will discuss Syrians and how they are caught in the crossfire of the war. And secondly, I will discuss the children and the women of Syria. And thirdly, I will discuss the refugees and how they affect us. So firstly, first, I will discuss how the Syrians are caught in the war. And uh, the Pentagon statement released a statement on Thursday, November 26, 2016, saying that during the bombing of Al Takar, they nearly killed 100 Islamic State fighters and killed 24 civilians who were believed to have fleeing the site of the bombing. This frightens the civilians for their lives and for protection. This also worries them for how they can survive on an everyday to day basis. A retired Air Force General, Lieutenant David DePula, stated that there isn't no other military in the world, like the US, who, can, who worries and cares more about the civilian casualties. Also, there was a recent case study of the post-traumatic disorder of civilians who they took in 450, yeah, 450 Syrians who have experienced or show symptoms of PTSD. 277 of them have fit the profile of full PTSD, while 39 of them fit the profile of partial PTSD, while 300, no, 137 of them show no symptoms at all. Which brings me to my next idea of how women and children are constantly at risk and the dangers of them fleeing this country. They're three times more likely to be killed and hurt during this environment, being that women and children do not have a really great education. And it is very hard for them being that they're women and they still don't have the rights as we do here. Because of this, they have, because of this, the bombing and the shelling, they are three times more likely to be killed within their own homes and their own little shelters opposed to being in the war and just every day-to-day -day needs that they are experiencing these bombings. And they are more likely to cause infections due to the air pollution and due to the lack of education and the knowledge of how to live on the everyday today due to all the war, the bombings and the wars. And because of this, a lot of them are fleeing the country, which brings me to my next topic of the refugees and how this can affect us from our everyday to day lives in the future. Since last year, there have been 8,000 refugees who have fled to the United States. Ann C. Richards stated that by the end of last year, we should have at least 10,000 more refugees. That's 78% of women and children who are supposed to be coming to the United States. This can indirectly affect us as well as taking jobs, um, it can cause taxes, and it can also affect other countries as well, such as Europe, who have one million have claimed to go to the, con um, the camps there 
just for an education so they can better themselves as well as um, for safety. And 4.8 million have fled to Turkey, Egypt, Lebanon, and Iraq. So during the speech, I have informed you on three topics. The um, Syrian civilians, how women and children are constantly in danger of the war, and thirdly, how the refugees in different countries and their dangers and how it can affect us. So back to my main uh, statistic of the 470,000 Syrians that are wounded and killed every day. That number is constantly increasing by this year. And I hope that you learned a lot about this.